the news for South Mississippi. WLOX News at 6. Again tonight with a capital murder charge announced in the death of five-year-old Janaea Thompson. As we've been reporting for the last six days, Janae was found dead in a vacant trailer in Gulfport last Thursday. Trenk Van Bui has been following this investigation since day one. She joins us now with the latest in tonight's top story. Christina, Gulfport Police Chief Leonard Papania says a man who was arrested last week for burglary is now charged with a capital murder of Janaea Thompson. Right now, Alberto Garcia is being held at the Harrison County Jail with no bond. You'll recall Garcia was arrested for burglary as a result of the investigation into Janaea's death. Police say Garcia lived at the Palms Apartments that is the same complex where Janaea lived with her mom. Chief Papania says another man, Julian Gray, remains a person of interest in this case. He is still behind bars tonight on unrelated charges. He also lived at the Palms. Investigators tell us Janaea was taken to a vacant trailer on Whitney Drive where she was sexually assaulted and strangled. It was a crime of opportunity and she was targeted based on her age. There has been considerable evidence collected which will be subjected to forensic examination. We don't know much about Alberto Garcia. Chief Papania says Garcia has lived at the Palms Apartments for about six months now, and the chief confirmed that Garcia and Gray are acquaintances. Christina. Thanks, Trang. So what's the next step in this capital murder case? We've learned the defendant will make his first appearance in court Friday morning. Alberto Garcia is scheduled to appear in the Harrison County Jail's courtroom at 8 a.m. Well, many people in the community have been praying for Janaea's family and showing their support in this time of need. As soon as this afternoon's press conference was over, people started showing up to the memorial that continues to grow just outside the abandoned trailer where Janaea was found. Carrie Grace joins us live from Whitney Drive. Emotions are a little different here today than they have been over the past week. Uh, not as many tears as news spreads that an arrest has been made in the murder of Janaea Thompson. Now we have video from the scene earlier. This is one of the very first reactions I was able to get as neighbors with huge smiles on their face flocked to the memorial, hugging, crying, and just saying, thank God that an arrest has been made. They're happy, and some of them say they feel that justice for Janaea has been served, while others tell me they're not sure just because of the tragic accident that happened to this little girl, they're still not sure how to feel. Live in Gulfport, Carrie Grace, back to you, Christina. Thank you, Carrie. The murder of Janaea Thompson has caught the attention of a civil rights group from Memphis and the Arkansas NAACP. Dave Elliott is here to tell us about their interest in the case. Well, Christina, Operation Help Civil Rights will be joined by the NAACP at a press conference and rally in Gulfport this Saturday. The group says it wants to support the family of Janaea Thompson and make sure the police investigation is conducted properly and the killer is prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Well, one of the reasons we're coming down there to make sure that it's not a racial hate um, uh, uh, situation. And we also coming down to make sure that if they got someone in custody and they find out that these are the, the guys that done it, then the group wants the guys to be uh, put to death. Put to death, he says. That press conference is set for 2 p.m. Saturday. Lee said Al Sharpton's National Action Network may also participate. Christina? Strong words. Thanks, Dave. Just days after Janaea was found dead, the Gulfport community is again plagued by violence. Late last night, a Gulfport man was shot and killed at his home, which is less than two miles away from where Janaea's body was found. Police say the two murders are not related. Michelle Lady joins us live in the newsroom with the latest. 41-year-old Lamont Hayes was shot in the groin area and bled to death, according to coroner Gary Hargrove. Right now, all police are saying about the possible suspects is that there are two black men who are wearing dark clothes, bandanas over their faces, and were both armed with guns when they went into Hayes' home last night and shot him. This afternoon, I talked with some of those mourning Hayes' death. He was a real sociable person. You know, he was a real kind-hearted person. I don't know who the woman 
do something like this to him. Friends and family of Lamont Hayes have been driving past Hayes' home, hoping the news they heard about Hayes being murdered is not true. But the harsh reality is slowly sinking in. It made me feel sad that this could happen. I knew him. And I loved him because he was a very friendly person. Every time I would see him, he would you know, smile and give me a hug because we were, you know, like I said, way back. Hayes' neighbor, D. Kurtz, can't stop looking out the door at Hayes' home, waiting for him to come outside. She says she has known Hayes for 16 years. When it's this close to home and knowing him that long, the world doesn't look very good. Police say around 11.30 Tuesday night, two men walked into Hayes' home and assaulted and shot him while he was asleep. And then police say after they tried to take his car. I just can't believe it. this has happened in, you know, in my neighborhood. And I know that both the little girl family as well as the month. With two murders in just one week, Bernadine Weary says she isn't sleeping easy at night. And she has something to say to those responsible for the violence. Please stop. Neighbors and friends say Hayes leaves behind a wife and children. This is the sixth murder in Gulf for this year. Three of those murders have been closed. As we reported earlier today, a man was charged with Janaea's death today. But so far, no one has been charged in Hayes' murder or the April 14th murder of 21-year-old Britton Owen at William Bell Apartments. Christina? Thanks, Michelle. Today was sentencing day for Scott Walker in connection with the DMR corruption scandal. Doug Walker was in the Hattiesburg courtroom as Walker found out his fate. Doug joins us with more on that now. Good evening, Christina. Indeed, Scott Walker found out his fate before Judge Keith Starrett today. 18 months in jail, $390,000 in restitution, and surprisingly, no fine whatsoever, with the judge saying that he found evidence that Walker could not afford to pay the fine. So again, he was he was pleaded guilty on one conspiracy count and one fraud count, and he was sentenced to 18 months on each, but they are to be served concurrently, so that means literally 18 months in jail. Now, I talked with Scott Walker's attorney, Arthur Madden, as he was coming out of the courthouse today in Hattiesburg, and here's what he described about his client having to go to prison. The reality is that the prison system is, is difficult. Um, it's probably better on the federal side on the state side. Um, yeah, uh, Scott will get through this. Meanwhile, I also talked to Scott Walker. He arrived at the courthouse with his mother and his wife at his side. His father, Bill Walker, not at his side. As you may recall, Bill Walker was sentenced to five months, five years rather, in prison last month. And the reason why he wasn't here today was because the family took him to prison in Louisiana. Earlier this week, here's how Scott described that moment. That was, uh, that was very tough. Uh, we dropped him off at Oakdale, Louisiana, Monday, and that was uh, a very tough day for the whole family. So now what happens next? We've seen Bill Walker sentenced. We've seen Michael Janice sentenced. We've now seen Scott Walker sentenced. Two of the principals in the DMR corruption scandal, Tina Shoemate, she was charged federally and statewide. Also, the former chief of staff, Joe Ziegler, was scheduled to be trialed in August. However, something happened today with Joe Ziegler. He has filed a motion to change his innocent plea. Now, exactly what he's going to change it to, we do not know, but it's a pretty good guess that he planning, uh, is planning on pleading guilty to some kind of charge involved with this corruption uh, scandal. So we'll be back in about a half an hour with more on WLX News at CBS. And I'm Doug Walker reporting live in Hattiesburg. Now back to Christina in the studio. Thanks for that report, Doug. Now it's time to turn things over to weather. Let's go to Chief Meteorologist Mike Reader for tonight's forecast. Well, you know, there was a lot of cloud cover around today, but not much rain. I guess the big total was up in Bart. Bob called me from up there, said he had 73 hours of initial rain. As we head toward the evening hours, we notice those clouds are actually starting to break up. So we should see uh, partly cloudy skies on in through the evening hour. The LOX 24 7 radar, not seeing any rain around. Well, I say that there may be a shower over around Pascagoula, but that's about it. Not a whole lot of cloud cover left in the area either. Bigger picture what's happening, of course, that upper level low that drifted to the west is now just basically falling apart, and that's going to continue for the rest of the week. As far as our evening forecast, we should be uh, by 9 o'clock still in the low 80s, but then we'll drop 
into the mid 70s and that is where we should stay overnight. I am taking a chance of rain out of the forecast, partly cloudy, warm and humid. We call that money in the business. Meanwhile, as we take a look at things, a few showers, it looks like a typical summer pattern. When I come back, I'll let you know what happens to tropical depression too. Thanks, Mike. It's still to come tonight, battling a massive blaze of ocean spray. What business was destroyed by flames? Plus, a high school rivalry taken too far. The vandalism now covering Houston Central High School.